In this video, I'm going to be showing you CodeStraw, which is Mr. AI's latest coding model. I'm going to be pointing you to different resources on how you can use and try this out. This model was designed specifically for code generation tasks. As it mentions in the blog post, it helps developers write and interact with code through a shared instruction and completion API endpoint. Now, the interesting thing in the blog post is it's mentioned that it can be used to design advanced AI applications for software developers. CodeStraw is fluent in 80 programming languages, including the most popular ones like Python, Java, C, C++, JavaScript. It's nice to see that this was trained on a broad number of programming languages. Here it mentions that CodeStraw saves developers time. It can also complete coding functions, write tests, complete any partial code, using a fill in the middle mechanism. So you can imagine using something like GitHub Copilot or Continue, or you can have something that will auto-complete your code as you're writing it. To break down some of the technical specs, it's a 22 billion parameter model. So depending on your machine, there's a chance that you will be able to run a model like this locally. It is on that larger size. Generally speaking, 7 billion parameter models work pretty well across most devices, say in the past four or five years. And obviously on newer devices, it works quite a bit better. Assuming you have enough space and a reasonable amount of RAM, you'll be able to run this. So in terms of the context length, it allows for a 32,000 token context length that you can pass in. And you can see on the human eval metric that this far exceeds even the Llama 370B model. So in terms of the MBPP, it does rank higher than Llama 3. It doesn't quite reach DeepSeek Coder 33B, but it also is a considerably smaller model. That's something to keep in mind. In terms of some of these other metrics, so the MBPP and then the Crux eval, these are mostly Python specific metrics. For a model its size, it is at the top of its category. The one thing to note with some of the metrics are just a little bit shy of some of these other models is you have to keep in mind this is a 22 billion parameter model. When you're comparing the SQL Spider score, this is comparing it to a 70 billion parameter model. And then it's similar on the DeepSeek Coder MPP Python evaluation metric here. It comes pretty close, but this is also a model that's about a third of the size larger. This model also has a significantly larger context length that it accepts. So for programming tasks, the more context, the better. The more that we can pass into a model and it has context of what we're trying to accomplish. The one thing that I wanted to point out specifically on my channel. So I'm primarily a TypeScript developer. This model does outperform on the Python metrics by a large margin across the board, especially for its size. But given that a lot of the content and AI applications that I build are TypeScript related, you can see that on the human eval TypeScript metric, the Llama 370B model is still at the top here. This is obviously still a very impressive metric given the size of the model. Now, in terms of the fill in the middle performance, something like GitHub Copilot or something like Continue, this is largely what those types of plugins use. Now, with that being said, with the TypeScript functionality, this is pretty gigantic for JavaScript. So the human eval FIM, so fill in the middle evaluation metric. So this absolutely crushes it across the board. So you can see for both Python, the leap from deep seat coder 33 billion parameter, this is a huge increase. And then also even for the JavaScript model. So to use this within JavaScript applications and within something like a tool potentially continue, or Cody from Sourcegraph, which I'll imagine they'll also be able to support this, you'll be able to get some really good results. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how to get started in a few different ways. The easiest way to get started is you can just head on over to the chat on Mistral AI. So to get started, you can just go ahead and select CodeStraw on chat.mistral. And then you can paste in the code so you can ask it to do particular things. You can say, improve the error handling in this let's just see what it gives here. It's incredibly fast for response times. And we can see it's starting to add some try catches to the original logic that I have here. So I'm not going to test the model in depth in this video. I'm just really going to show you different avenues on how you can actually get started. So if you want to gain access to their API, just head on over to console.mistral.ai. Once you're logged into the console here, you can go to CodeStraw here, and then you can request access to the model. So right now you will have to request access. I did have to put in my phone number. And then shortly thereafter, after I put in the confirmation code, I was able to gain access. They mentioned that this endpoint is going to be free for about eight weeks. And they're going to be gating it through this waitlist to ensure the quality of this. So if you want to gain access to the endpoint, so you can just grab the endpoint base URL right here. And then similarly, if you want to generate an API key, you're able to do that just here as well. Obfuscated my API key here, because that's one thing that I noticed in their console is they don't actually have that obfuscated on screen here. So now the one thing to note is let's say you are a GPU provider or Together AI or something like Grok or what have you you are able to still contact them for self-deployment. If you're interested in doing that, let's say you're a company like Together AI, 
and that this is going to be a very popular model potentially and you want to deploy this, you can go ahead and contact their sales as well. So while it's nice to have that lit chat interface where you can get started, there are some really great options on actually including this within VS Code if you want to get started. They have an integration with continue.dev as well as tab nine. Right now, if you're going to be leveraging their API key, it does have a rate limit of 30 requests per minute as well as 2000 requests per day, and it's going to be free until August 1st. They have some good examples here on getting started within their documentation, but I'm going to show you how to get started within Continue itself. If I just head on over to a project, you can search for Continue within the extension marketplace and then once you've downloaded it it's really simple to get started so you'll be able to see it within the bottom right corner here you can enable it if it's not enabled and then to actually get set up so on mac the command is command option l and then you can open up this left hand pane here and this is going to be how you're able to interact with some of the different models that they have if i just go ahead and select that i want to use a new model you can select the mistral api and then from here, you can just go ahead and copy your API key. You can go ahead and paste it in. Right here, I have an empty TypeScript file. What I can do here is I can specify what I want to have generated. I can say, write me a hello world express server. You can see very quickly there that we have our response back from the code straw endpoint. And then what I can do here is I can just go ahead and select it. So you can command shift enter on Mac to accept it. And then we also have the ability within continue where you can highlight a piece of code just like this. And you have a couple options with command i you can say change this endpoint to hello next let's just put in a random word there you can see instead of that base url now we have that endpoint pointing to hello next and then similar you can select it or reject it just like you saw there now the other nice thing with continue is say if i highlight a piece of code again you can also click command l you'll see that we now have this code block within this chat interface here so i can say something like what is this doing? And then really quickly, it's describing in really good detail exactly what that's doing. So if you're familiar with GitHub Copilot or more recently Super Maven or any tools like that, these code completion tools, Continue is a really great option because you can use CodeStraw, but you can also use a number of different models as well. Basically all of the different popular models you're able to incorporate into your editor. And you're also even able to incorporate local models. Say if you have something running locally on Olama, you can also incorporate those as well. That's it for this video. I just wanted to do a really quick one on how you could get started with CodeStraw, but otherwise, congratulations to the team at Mistral AI on this new incredible model that they put out for us. I'm going to be trying it out over the coming weeks and months. If you found this video useful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, until the next one.